Good morning, everyone. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. So this morning we remember especially Donaria Pereira, a uh, sister of Orvalda and Celia. Did I get that right? Yeah. Good. And for those who are new to the uh, parish, this is a uh, ritual that's carried out between Easter and Pentecost. It's preparing for the Spirit, the coming of the Spirit. And so that ritual will take place right at the end of Mass. So thank you for being here and thank you for calling down the Spirit upon us. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord have mercy. You came among us to call sinners, Christ of mercy. mercy. And you intercede for us now at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins. Bring us to life everlasting. Glory to God in the highest. And on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, Have mercy on us, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, lead us to a share in the joys of heaven, so that the humble flock may reach where the brave shepherd has gone before, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Paul and Barnabas went on from Perga and came to Antioch in Pisidia. On the Sabbath day, they went to the synagogue and sat down. When the meeting of the synagogue broke up, many Jews and devout converts to Judaism followed Paul and Barnabas, who spoke to them and urged them to continue in the grace of God. The next Sabbath, Almost the whole city gathered to hear the word of the Lord. But when the Jewish officials saw the crowds, they were filled with jealousy. And blaspheming, they contradicted what was spoken by Paul. Then both Paul and Barnabas spoke out boldly, saying, It is necessary that the word of God shall be spoken first to you, since you rejected it, and judge yourself to be unworthy of eternal life, we are now turning to the Gentiles. For so the Lord has commanded us, saying, I have sent you to be the light for the Gentiles, so that they may bring salvation to the ends of the earth. When the Gentiles heard this, they were glad and praised the word of the Lord. As many as had been destined for eternal life became believers. Thus the word of the Lord spread throughout the region. But the officials incited the devout women of high standing and the leading men of the city and stirred up persecution against 
Paul and Barnabas and drove them out of their region. So they shook the dust off their feet in protest against them and went on to Iconium. And the disciples were filled with joy and with the Holy Spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. We, we are, are his people, people the sheep, sheep of his of pasture. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Know that the Lord is God. It is he that makes us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. The Lord is good, his steadfast love endures forever, and his faithfulness to all generations. There's people, the sheep of his pasture. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. I am the good shepherd, says the Lord. I know my sheep and mine know me. Lord be with you. And with your A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said, My sheep hear my voice. I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they will never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. What my Father has given me is greater than all else. No one can snatch it out of the Father's hand. Father and I are one. The Gospel of the Lord. Pope Francis has said that fraternity is the new frontier. Now, I've had a hard time over the past year since trying to translate that into a word in English that is inclusive. Fraternity is sort of a male thing. And the only thing I come up with was kinship, and that was pretty flat. And then preparing for this weekend, I realized shepherd. That's the thing, shepherd. And so the new frontier, the thing that we have to really be challenged by in this era in the world is shepherding, shepherding. What comes to mind when you think of shepherd? Or being a shepherd or being shepherded by others? This image has a great tradition for us. In the Old Testament, the, the king was the shepherd. Interestingly, shepherd referred to laity. And so it was the king, it was the politician, so to speak, that was the shepherd. And by extension, other uh, lay persons in the community they were also called to be shepherds. In the New Testament, in the Christian era, of course, uh, in baptism, 
we are called to be shepherds. Called to be shepherds. It's a great image that we have to take and sort of pull within ourselves. Shepherding has two sides to it, I think. There's, there's a compassionate side, a kind of a cozy side to this thing of what we are called to do for others. As friend, shepherd's friend, spouse, shepherd's spouse, um, parishioner, shepherds, another parishioner, caring for, guiding, looking after. But there's also a kind of a strong part to it where you have to sometimes stand your ground. When I was in another parish work, I used to um, do this little trap for grade two students who were preparing for first confession, first reconciliation. And of course, you, you'd have to know that I grew up on a farm and we had sheep. So I know a little about sheep and shepherding in that sense. And frequently, the, the uh, grade twos preparing for first reconciliation would use that scripture passage of the lost sheep. And Jesus leaving the 99 in the desert, in the wilderness, and going and looking and looking and looking for the, the one sheep that was lost. Finally getting that sheep and bringing that sheep back to be with the rest. And then I would say, do you think that that sheep that went away and that was sought after and carried back to the rest of the flock, do you think that sheep would ever, ever go away again? And they would say, no, Father. And then I would spring the trap. I'd say, you don't know sheep like I know sheep. As a matter of fact, the one that went away had got a little taste of the outside world and would be rather anxious to, you know, go away again and go away again and go away again. So it's like that with shepherding. You see, if we go and search for someone or we support someone as shepherd and uh, the first time, that's easy. But then the 15th time, 150th time, so you may find yourself a, a friend or perhaps a parent or grandparent and you may try to support or to shepherd someone out of a, a difficult position by giving them money. And then you find yourself in a position a little while later where you're asked to give more money and then to give more money and at some point along the line you have to put your foot down and say that's it, that's it. That's part of shepherding, too. And it can also take place with regard to addictions. Now, I know that addiction's a sickness, so uh, we're not talking about it in the same way as the money business. But, you know, you really try to engage someone in your family or a friend who has an addiction to drugs or alcohol, and maybe you get them into a 12-step group or something like that, and then they fall off the wagon again. And then you, you get them back again. And a few, you can do it a few times, but like the shepherd, the sheep can go away again and again and again. And at some point, you have to say, this is it. You have to take responsibility for your own life. So that's a part of being a shepherd too. It's kind of a cozy image, but it does have that very strong responsibility to it as well. It is something that is important. Um, we see examples, of course, of neglect of that. Uh, in the workplace, you may know that someone is in trouble in some kind of way, and uh, you don't go and speak to them. Just take them into your confidence and you know, be a shepherd to them. We see what happens in the church when bishops, for example, really are 
pretty well in the know with regard to what's happening in other dioceses or other bishops, but they don't go to those other bishops and really call them to account early on. But they let it go down the line and down the line. And then at some point it b blows up. So there's really a responsibility for all of us. Of course, with priests, with family members, with spouses, same kind of thing. Shepherding is a great responsibility for us. We stand now and we place our prayers before God. <clears throat> For those who serve and lead in the church, that they may follow the example of Christ, the Good Shepherd, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Deacon Phil Carney, on the occasion of his anniversary to ordination to the diaconate, we pray to the Lord. For farmers, shepherds, and those who work on the land, they continue their efforts to show respect for all of God's creations. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have shepherded us, particularly parents, teachers, pastors, healthcare workers, and mentors, that God will continue to work in them and guide them in helping others to grow. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all mothers and those who have been like a mother to us, that God will bless and strengthen them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are frail and elderly, for those who are alone, for the sick, especially Dale Calkins, Tim Rigby, David Tessier, and Susan Saunders, may their trust in Christ bring them healing and peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. <clears throat> for those who have died, especially Maria de Jesu Diaz. May they rejoice forever in the kingdom of God's risen Son. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. <clears throat> For all the prayers that we carry silently within our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious and loving God, shepherding us always, we ask you to hear these our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. You may be seated as the altar table is prepared for the celebration of Eucharist. And it's a good time right now. The next Sunday we have First Communions and... Uh, also confirmation, so I want to bless these for Hannah and Jacob. Jacob, right. May Almighty God bless this, these rosaries and these scapulars. May it be with Hannah and Jacob. May it be blessed, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer you. 
which earth has given and human hands have made, it will become for us the bread of life. Through the mystery of this water and this wine, may we become partakers of the divinity of Christ who humbled himself to share in our human life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and to be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you. Wash me, O Lord, of my iniquity. Cleanse me of my Pray that our sacrifice may become acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. <clears throat> Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these Paschal mysteries, so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to praise you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him the children of light rise to eternal life and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful for his death is our ransom from death and in his rising the life of all has risen therefore overcome with paschal joy every land every people exults in your praise and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim holy You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Michael, our Bishop, all the clergy, and all of the baptized. Remember also our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, 
may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For it is through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we now dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Kingdom. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. I invite you to offer each other now an appropriate sign of the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Christ be with you. And I offer peace from Our Lady of Fatima Church to all those joining us in live stream so you know that you are part of our community at Our Lady of Fatima Church in Kingston here. And we offer peace, the peace of Christ. Lamb of God. My sisters and brothers in Christ, behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are we who are called now to the supper of the Lamb. Lord. May the body of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. May the blood of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. I would encourage you as we, how do we think of someone we, we would like to shepherd? Someone who has shepherded us.
Let us rise and pray. Look upon your flock, kind shepherd, and be pleased to settle in eternal pastures the sheep you have redeemed by the precious blood of your Son, who lives and who reigns forever and ever. Um, now, Brother Tavares is really going to take over pretty well here. I didn't, at the beginning, recognize mothers. Now, I did last night, if that's uh, any help to you, but uh, so let's put our hands together for all those mothers and hope you have a great day, all right? <laughs> Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful, and kindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your Spirit, and they shall be created, and you shall renew the face of the earth. O God, by the light of the Holy Spirit, did instruct the hearts of the faithful, grant that by the same Holy Spirit we may be truly wise and ever enjoying consolation through Christ our Lord. Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful, and kindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your Spirit, and they shall be created, and you shall renew the face of the earth. O God, who by the light of the Holy Spirit did instruct the hearts of the faithful, grant that by the same Holy Spirit we may be truly wise, and ever enjoy his consolation through Christ our Lord. Thank <laughs> you. 